It is great to be able to work with so many talented people in the retail automotive industry. And it has really been um, amazing to see the star uh, in Lori Halter, who is the owner of Charisma Communications, who has played such a big part in fixed operations and bringing a lot of new ideas and thoughts and processes to the surface. So Lori, welcome back to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Ted, thank you so much for having me. And like I said, before we hopped on, you have just, as I thought about the progressive people that I'm going to talk about in the presentation today, every single one is on your show. So back at you. Thank you for being a proponent at all times of Fixed Ops. Hey, and, uh, you know, I've, I've reached out to you, you know, to, uh, you know, to help us, uh, you know, put together and moderate some panels. And I know you work closely uh, with a lot of speakers here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Yeah. So congratulations to you, Lori, on all the success that you're having. Uh, I'm excited today uh, to see your presentation. Uh, let's be of service in service and yeah. uh, to learn more. So, um, Thank you so much. if it's OK, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let's do it. Let's do it. So yeah, as you said, this is really let's be of service in service. And I wanted to talk a lot about um, just how we can make for happier staff members and employees in our service departments. So I think we had talked about kind of a Q&A, Ted. If you wanna, if you wanna start us off, we can we can hit it. Well, you know, um, I'm talking to a lot of people, and there seems to be a common theme. Um, about retention in fixed operations. Yes. And that seems to be very popular. Um, but, you know, but the, I guess the question is, Lori, you know, how do we, how do we get there? Yeah. So I, this is such an important question because as I talk to people, it seems like the focus is always on uh, customer experience and it absolutely should be. But happy customers come from happy employees. So what you need to always begin with, and Dave O'Brien from Quantum 5 is wonderful about this. John Traver from Traver is wonderful about talking about this. It begins with happy employees. So that really is all about, are you providing the training? Is it seamless for your experience? So if someone comes from sales where they're having a great experience into service, are they having that same experience? Are they still feeling that great sense of, that someone is taking care of them? Um, and the people taking care of them are going to be the employees in our service and our service centers. One thing I'd love to share, I asked um, getting ready for a, pres a different presentation on service what they could do to make, I asked employees in service, what can your owners do to make you happy? One of the questions or answers, Ted, was um, they were given a baseball, two baseball tickets for this woman to go take her son to the baseball game. So, and she remembered it and told it on the show. So this, we're not talking about big things here. We're really talking about small things you can do to make your employees happy. So, you know, training, the retention part of it, are there small things like you can do, but like those baseball tickets to make those employees happy? So that really the customer experience being of service and service is not just to our customers. How can we make our employees better and happier in their roles? And, you know, I, I think we're learning a lot about that. All right. That it all starts internally. You mentioned two great names in our industry, uh, David O'Brien of Quantum 5 and John Traver yes. of uh, of uh, Traver Connect. Uh, both, both great organizations. They do a whole lot for our industry uh, yep. and, and they deal very much, you know, with the, the culture and the training. So Lori, let's say we have the training down. The team is happy. How does that transfer over uh, to the, to the guests or to the customer? Yeah, so there's a couple of different experiences and we talked off, off screen, Ted. I love giving real examples because I feel like none of this really matters unless someone's actually doing it. So one of the real examples of creating a VIP guest experience is from Herman Mazda. And this is a simple, they've created a VIP guest experience in their service department. You come in, they've already figured out, they've emailed you to see if you want a Starbucks or a smoothie and what type. So you come in, you're greeted with a Starbucks or a smoothie, and then you have one person from beginning to end taking you through the process and they call that person their concierge. So again, everything we're talking about, like small, small things. If someone gives me a Starbucks, I'm, I'll go wherever they want. <laughs> <laughs> so small things. This is a great example of something that they've put together. It's not going to take that much outside of their actual process um, to implement. But I felt like this was really amazing example of a way you can take care of a customer. 
And by the way, that one person taking care of the customer, yes. I'm, starting, I'm starting to see that now at more dealerships and dealer groups, uh, not just in service, but of course in sales as well. Lori, yeah. can, you, can you give us some other examples of the ways that you know service teams are elevating that that experience yeah. of the guest. Okay, so speaking of great, great people in the industry and impressive people in the industry, this is um, Ford Restaurant from our good friend Ed Roberts over at Beaux-Arts. And this is, now this is probably an example of not something small, something that they did that's amazing, progressive, but also large. They created this restaurant on site. So when people come to get service, instead of sitting for an hour in the lobby, you go right across the street to the restaurant and you get lunch, you get a drink. They were telling me that they have people come in. There's one woman that comes in every Friday night to get dinner and a drink. She's not even a, she's not even a dealership customer. She comes to the restaurant, but guess what? She could be a customer. And so when she next thinks about coming in for service, she's going to think of this store because this is now her favorite restaurant. So like Ed Roberts, hats off to you. This is an amazing example of providing an elevated customer experience. And, you know, something about Ed, Lori, he, um, he's really concerned about uh, not only the guests, but the employees. And yes. he, really, he takes the time. Um, and I don't know how he does it, but you know, if, if employees want to speak with him and he takes the time to yep. talk to them and to listen and, uh, you know, he's, he's got a, he's got a skill that, yes. uh, you know, I, I wish a lot more folks, you know, had, you know, in our industry. I agree. I think it's all very genuine and that, that definitely shines through. He truly does want to help both right. his staff and his customers. And then let's see, I'll give you another example that Ed is working on at his store. So this is an example that we don't have to be big. You don't have to build a restaurant. They have a ping pong table in their dealership. I mean, how fun is that? Like if you're there with your, I've been with my kids in service. It's a nightmare. What if you're just like, okay, listen guys, we have to stay here. Let's go get a drink over at the restaurant. Let's go get a Coke. And then let's come back and play ping pong. I mean, just another great example of something very, very easy. And I think this might even be staff who's playing ping pong. So, you know, another example of staff and customer uh, experience that you can just elevate in the smallest of ways. I, I think I think a lot of families would, you know, a lot of kids would want to come to the dealership. Yeah. <laughs> I think also I don't have this in a picture of this, but I'd love to see a picture. I believe Ed told me at one of their dealerships, they have a pump track outside and they invite people to come by with their kids to be the pump, like do their bikes on the pump track. So just all great ways to bring people to your dealership and your service department that have nothing to do with service and everything to do with being a part of the community and creating a customer experience that's really elevated above everyone else in your community. And, you know, so many great examples, Lori. Um, and I see more and more dealership groups. And, uh, you know, David O'Brien was talking about that on the event as well. Uh, any thoughts about where we're going, you know, with the future of service, you know, to continue to better serve the guests? Yeah. So um, I have a couple of different things. And this is really this is really amazing. There's So these are, again, just real examples of people that have what they've talked about. A lot of service departments are now putting together VIP packages that they leave in their car. And so it can be like, this one's a great example of, you know, movie night. And so this um, individual dealership leaves a guest package in every car and it's got some movies and some cute like popcorn candy. You know, this is an easy, easy way you can do that. Um, I was talking about, again, like everyone I have, like I said at the beginning of the show, everyone that I'm giving examples of is a big um is a big guest on your show, but Traction, which I know is one of the sponsors, I was talking with uh, one of their members and he was saying that he recently received a gift in the mail from the service department of his dealership for his anniversary. And let me be clear, it was not his anniversary of the, becoming a customer of the dealership. It was his wedding anniversary. So when uh -oh. he came in, they had gotten the date of his birthday, his wedding anniversary, and a couple of other key dates, and they send gifts in the mail. So they were surprised. And I believe he said it was, um, I think it was champagne flutes. But what a great idea to remember someone's wedding anniversary. And we were in a crowded room. Dan, I'm sorry, Dan Barris was the person. We were okay. in a crowded room, and he was explaining to us all, this had made such an impression that he was talking to 20 other people about getting this wedding anniversary gift. So like this in my mind is just another really great example of something that did not cost them a lot of money, but when they put it in his car, it was on the front seat of his car. Um, 
you know, he remembered it and spoke about it in front of a group of people. So as we're thinking through how can we really elevate the customer experience and show them that they're important to us, what are some small ways like the ones I've just gone through that you can make them feel special and it does not have to be big. And, you know, with the amount of money that is paid by OEMs and then by dealers yes. you know, to help retain customers or to attract, Lori, new, new customers, yes. right? Um, look at all the little things that we could do. And a lot of the suggestions that you're mentioning here, that makes so much sense. And, you know, in the case of Dan Barris at Traction, you know, probably won them over a customer for life. Oh, 100%. Not only a customer for life, but then he's spreading the good news to all the other people in the room. Um, a couple of things of where we're going, uh, UVI, which I believe has also been on your show, mm -hmm. they have scanning technology that allows, now moving on from just kind of the gifts, they have scanning technology that you can bring your vehicle in, it scans the entire vehicle, and then gives the pictures to the customer. So I think another thing that we're really seeing is transparency. How can we ensure that the customers trust that what we're saying to them actually needs to happen? And so I think as we look forward, um, for your attendees, it's really a matter of how can we create a transparent experience? Is that pictures? Is that a video walk around? True video does a great video walk around. Um, you know, what are the areas that we can improve to really build that trust that they, what they're seeing is actually happening within the vehicle? Yeah. And, um, and you touched on it just now as well. Another word, uh, that I'm hearing a whole lot of, Lori, in our industry is transparency, being transparent yes. for the customer. Yes. And uh, in service and parts, transparency didn't really come up a whole lot. Um, we started seeing that in the finance and business office maybe a few, five, 10 years ago. Yep. Uh, I think a lot of that accelerated in the last two, two and a half years uh, with transparency. Uh, and now it's more being accepted. Well, that's coming now to service the transparency in pricing, you know, as an example, yes, and, uh, you know, yes. to make the customer. And I think that's so interesting because we really are coming to sort of the golden age of fixed ops right now. Right. So I think what we've learned is inventory is low. They're fine on the sales side. So then what do you do to elevate that customer experience? And it really, I think that's why we're seeing the importance of fixed ops after COVID people couldn't come into the dealership. They weren't able to, you know, the, inventory woes weren't creating as much of the inventory issues or that the demand issues were there. So then the, in, uh, we started looking into the fixed ops side and I'm telling you, it's an idea whose time has come because fixed ops has always been where it's at. We, we know that, right? <laughs> you are such a great messaging person. I don't even know if you, what you just did, but I'm over here writing down, taking notes. You just, just to go back a minute or so. You said, this is the golden age of fixed stops. <laughs> I'm writing that down because I think that is, the so, PR comes in, right? that is so powerful, <laughs> Lori, what well, you just true. said. It is true. It's, don't you believe that it's true? I feel it. I, yes, yes. The clients I'm working, I don't only work with fixed stops. I work on the retail side. I work in fleet. I work in manufacturing. Fixed ops right now is really having a moment. And, you know, I think all of the people that are listening jump on it because it fixed ops right now is really key for profitability. You know, everything we're talking about, customer retention, customer experience, it's all focused on fixed ops right now. Talk to me for a minute about what you do, because and I know you're really busy, but you really yeah. help the messaging with a lot of businesses, a lot of yeah. folks, a lot of people I've met on the through the Fixed Ops Roundtable. You really help define their message, making it concise, clarifying it. Um, take us through a, a little bit about what you do, if you don't mind. I know you don't like to, to talk I'm about yourself. I'm into talking about my business, so yes. Um, so we really, uh, we really, I think of myself as a content creator and strategist. So it's really, how can we take the content needs of these companies, whether it's a press release, social media, um, articles, shows like yours, speaker submissions, and clarify the message and really differentiate these companies in the marketplace? Because there is a lot of companies that on the outside look like they're doing the same thing. And truthfully, what you need is to zero in on what are you doing best and to put it back around to what we began with, that comes with how do you best serve your clients? How do you best partner with these clients? Not a vendor, partner. And so we really work with our, um, with our partners on how to best create that message and get it out into the market. Everyone, I see Lori 
work with a lot of companies and I'm aware of some, some I'm not, but it's, it's not uncommon that I will see something outside of the fixed apps roundtable on another platform or another medium. And I'll look at that and I'll look at the company and I'll say to myself, Lori halted. That. <laughs> I, know, I know she did that. She's behind that. She made that happen. And I, you know, so Lori, congratulations to you and charisma communications on all the success you're having. If our audience uh, wants to reach out to you, I know you've got a, you've got a, a dynamic podcast out there. Um, what's the best way uh, for people to find more Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think the best way is my email is, you know, on the ticker below, but also I'm very, very active in LinkedIn. So you can find me on LinkedIn under Lori Halter and the podcast is careering, which is female leaders in automotive. So if there's any female leaders out there that would like to be guests on the podcast, I would love to hear from you. Great. Well, Lori, a great, great honor to have you today at the Fixed Stops Roundtable. I invite you back. I know you got some other segments on here yes. so, uh, and I know you're very busy. So thank you so much for all you do. <laughs> Well, never too busy for you, Ted. Thank you so much for having me on. Everybody, Lori Halter from Charisma Communications here at the Fixed Ops Roundtable.